In this video, we're going to look at an example of adding rational expressions. A rational expression is, is kind of a fancy name for fractions, or fractions, a lot of times we say rational expressions if we're talking about fractions that have variables in them. So it's important to recall the rules of adding fractions. We need to follow those same exact rules, even though these are very complicated looking fractions. So when we add fractions, we need a common denominator. That's the first thing. We need these two denominators to be the same. In order to make them the same, we need to look at the factors of these denominators. So notice that each of these denominators are trinomials that can be factored. That's the first thing we want to do is factor these trinomials. I also notice that neither of the trinomials have a greatest common factor. There's nothing I can take out of each term, so that's good. And now I'm looking at them and I'm noticing that the coefficient on the x squared term is 1 in each of these. So these are going to be pretty straightforward to factor, both of them. For the first one, I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 54 and add to be negative 3. And I can use this because there's a 1 in front of the x squared. I can use this little algorithm. So the most common numbers that add to, or multiply to be 54 are 9 and 6 and those do um, add to be negative 3 if we make it a negative 9 and a positive 6. So negative 9 times positive 6 is negative 54 and negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. If you foiled this together you would end up getting that trinomial. For the second trinomial we have x and x and then we need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and add to be 1. So you might think of um, negative 10 and 3, negative 5 and 6, negative 2 and 15, but we're looking for a difference of 1. So 5 and 6 are going to be the factors that we need. We need a positive 1 in the middle, so a positive 6 is going to work for us. If we needed a negative 1 in the middle, we would make the 6 negative, and that's factoring that you've probably done before. Okay, so now that we have this factored, we can figure out what our least common denominator is going to be. The least common denominator needs to have the factors of both denominators. Notice that the denominator share a factor of x plus 6. So we know our least common denominator is going to have an x plus 6 in it. And we don't need to write that twice. We also need an x minus 9 because of the first denominator. So here's the first denominator, x minus 9, x plus 6. The second denominator needs an x plus 6 and an x minus 5. We already have the x plus 6, so we need to throw in an x minus 5, and that's our least common denominator. So now, in order to create this least common denominator, we need to multiply the top and bottom of each fraction by the factor that it's missing from the least common denominator. So the first fraction is missing the x minus 5 from the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 5, the numerator, and the bottom by x minus 5. Just squish that in there. And then on this one, we're missing the x minus 9. So I'm going to multiply the top by x minus 9 and the bottom by x minus 9. And that's going to give me my least common denominator on the bottom. Now for the numerator, I see that I've got a binomial times a binomial in each of these fractions. So I need to FOIL these numerators. This x plus 7, you could think of it as the quantity x plus 7. You have to take x minus 5 times the entire numerator. And the same is true for the other fraction. We have to take x plus 3 times x minus 9. So I have to FOIL these together. Let's do that next. OK, so I have x times x is x squared x times positive 7 is a positive 7x, negative 5 times x is a negative 5x, and negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. And that's all over my least common denominator, which is all this stuff over here. You could write that all out if you want. For the second fraction, I FOIL, I get x squared, and then I get x times negative 9 is negative 9x, 3 times x is positive 3x, you might have learned this as distributing instead of FOIL. FOIL is a common um, word used to describe this, first, outside, inside, last. But if you haven't heard of that, then you probably just learned distributing. And I put that all over my least common denominator. So now I'm in the position where I can add these two fractions together. So when I add them together, I'm going to have my least common denominator, which is x plus 6. I could write LCD again, but I'll 
write this out nice, x minus 9 and x minus 5. And what I need to do is add the numerators of the two fractions. The denominators stay the same when you're adding fractions. The numerators we add together. So what we're doing here basically is we're combining like terms when we add these all together. We have an x squared plus an x squared, so that's 2x squared. And then we have 7x take away 5x is 2x. Take away 9x would be negative 5x plus 3x would be negative 2x. So let's double check that, or maybe that's negative 4. Let's see. That's 2. Take away 9 is negative 7. Sorry, I had a feeling about that. It's always good to double check. So we have 2x, take away 9x is negative 7x, plus 3 is negative 4x. All right, so then we have negative 35 plus negative 27, which is a negative 62. So here we've added the two fractions together, the two rational expressions, and that's pretty good. We, we could call it a day here, but like with any fractions, when you're finished, you want to see if you can reduce them. So for this fraction, the, in order to see if it's going to reduce, we need to factor the numerator. The first thing I notice about the numerator is that each of the terms has a common factor of 2. So I want to take that 2 out. I'm going to work this way. So if I take that 2 out, I have x squared minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus 62 divided by 2 is 31. All over, and this will stay the same. Now I want to look at what's left in the parentheses in the numerator and ask myself if that's going to factor. And I've got um, a 1 in front of the x squared, so I can simply look and, at, look and see, ask myself, does anything multiply to be negative 31? and add to be negative 2. I don't know if you recognize it, but 31 is a prime number. The only thing that multiplies to be 31 is 1 in itself. So certainly nothing is going to multiply to be 31 and add to be 2. So we've verified that this cannot be reduced, and therefore we have our answer.